Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we're discussing the situation in Jammu and Kashmir. On October 31st, the Indian government initiated the process of the formal bifurcation of the state, which is now into effect. Post the abrogation of Article 370 on August 5th, the state has witnessed series of protests, multiple demonstrations, and of course, changes in the administrative processes. Today, we're especially discussing the land reorganization that has been initiated after the abrogation of 370. And to discuss this with us, we have Gautam Navlakha. Thank you, Gautam, for joining us. My first question to you is, currently there is a massive lawyer strike which is taking place in Jammu and it's not the first. There are other such strikes that have happened. But why is this one significant? How is it connected to the land in the state? Well, the reason why the Bar Association, which is actually headed by a Bharti Janta Party uh, person who happens to be its official spokesperson, and they have spearheaded this indefinite strike, which itself is very striking. Uh, their argument is that by uh, transferring the responsibility of registration of immovable property from the judiciary to a new department in the revenue, uh, under the revenue department uh, called registration department for uh, immovable property, what the government has done is divested the local people of even little possibility of relief and, and a transparent system for registration of their immovable property. This enhances the power of the central government over land issue, which in any case, under the Reorganization Act, they have uh, vested in the central government. Mm -hmm. It rests with the, because it's a union territory now, not a special status. Now, and they have deliberately done away with major land acts, uh, which take away the, the, which used to prevent uh, sale of land to an outsider, yeah. because it could not be sold to a non-permanent resident. Uh, at all, uh, and there were strict restrictions, guide, you know, uh, uh, guiding it. Now, uh, having done that as a first step, and now with this whole transfer of responsibility of registration, also with the central government via the revenue department, what you have done is that the union territory now is virtually like a colony uh, ruled by the center, where the local population have no control. And Jammu's lawyers were agitated precisely because of this. That their voices were not heeded. They were not taken into confidence. They kept on complaining and asking for, uh, for, for, for dialogue and all. It was not done. So the central government ignored its own people in Jammu, which is quite remarkable, in order to push through what it wants to against the wishes of the people. It shows that the extent to which they are willing to go. So it's very striking that land issue is something which still uh, is a major issue, uh, which plagues entire Jammu and Kashmir, including Ladakh. Yes. It's not as if Ladakh is uh, quiet. In fact, the demand in Ladakh is for the six scheduled status, yeah. which the central government is unwilling to, 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 to concede. Yes. Now, that, that's a very striking thing that if you wanted to divest, I mean, bifurcate a state and create a union territory, and then surely, given that it's a predominantly tribal area, why don't you uh, bring in six schedule, which itself shows the government's intentions of what they plan to do against the wishes of the local community. And I think that is the single most important issue. Yes, yeah, so we've been seeing that, as you mentioned uh, in this answer, that there is a, uh, there is a reading down of a lot of laws that has now taken place. So if you could tell us more about that, that how does it give center more power? What were these special provisions that were actually protecting the people? Well, for instance, under the Reorganization Act, uh, the police and public uh, order, uh, the powers uh, to formulate policies or new uh, uh, new laws doesn't rest with the Union Territory. It rests with the central government. Yes. Even the chief minister of the Union Territory doesn't even have the power to appoint his or her own principal secretary. It will be done by the lieutenant governor. So much so that the lieutenant governor is actually uh, not only in, ch in charge of day-to-day -day running, he has powers for budget making, 
uh, for over police, public order, uh, and of course the central bureaucracy. He has direct control over their functioning and their uh, transfer or appointment or promotion. Mm -hmm. The Union Territory government now, I mean Jammu and Kashmir from a special status, now reduced to virtually a colony called Union Territory, ruled by the central government, will have no power yes. to decide on a variety of subjects which actually directly concern them and directly concern the people. Not even the budget will be prepared by them. So what powers do, are they going to have? Negligible. It's like a municipal corporation. And you know, the kind of impact that it will have on, uh, it is important to understand this from you, that the impact that this will have now on uh, how land was distributed, who held the land, and what kind of changes that it may bring in the demographics of the state. Well, the fear is, I mean, the, the biggest fear that people feel right now is there is, and there is a concerted effort on the part of the government of India to, to persuade people to, to part with their land for a good price as they have been claiming in the advertisement and propaganda campaign that they have been running in Jammu and Kashmir. So as part of that, they are trying to encourage people to sell. So obviously, the, by reducing the, the question of who can own land, uh, and who can, uh, you know, become uh, owner of, a, of a, another immovable property, who can come and invest in land, etc., or some real estate company who wants to, um, it opens up doors for them. Yes. Which reduces the power. I mean, if you don't even have the local communities, don't even have a power through their own representatives in their own assembly, to, to formulate laws and policies regarding this matter, then obviously the central government will decide in the bureaucrats who are completely unrepresentative, who have no contact with the local uh, community, who are not bound by to follow the wishes or have any political uh, reason why they should uh, follow what the local communities have to say, they'll do exactly what uh, the government, central government uh, wants them to do. Yeah. And that is the biggest fear. So what will happen to, the, to, to all the land reforms and the, 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 the radical land reform that took place? I mean, I, I wonder, we'll see as, as things unfold. It's too, prim it's too early to say exactly which way it will move. But the fear is that will they even uh, try to uh, abolish uh, the Jagirdari system that, and uh, bring it back? That's I mean, there is, there, is a, mm. there is that fear that also hangs over it. This over and above, all that has happened in the last 70 years and particularly in the last 30 years, Sumedha, yes. with untold misery inflicted and violence inflicted on the population and people who have suffered for the last 30 years. Yeah. And it was almost revolutionary in terms of its, it was almost like a precedent that the state had set in terms of its land reforms for the rest of the country. So how has that model now, you know, suffered, is, has it suffered a hit? And ha, what was that model that was actually being looked up to so much with the state? And now that has been completely decimated with the new... I bill. wish it was true what you're saying, it, hmm. that the state was being looked at or the radical land reform yeah, yeah. in Jammu and Kashmir. I think we, we are becoming aware of it now. Yes. Uh, much too late. Mm -hmm. This is something which we, all of us knew even earlier. It's now when it is ending, it's coming to its, you know, it's being taken away yes. that we are realizing the significance of it. But let me tell you, I mean, uh, Jammu and Kashmir is, is, uh, is, uh, is made complicated because of three principal reasons, you know. It's a historical dispute which goes back to partition and the way in which independence or power got transferred yeah. uh, in the former British colony that we were, you know, and that how India got divided. The second is what the local party, which was one of the premier pre pre uh, uh, leading political uh, movements in Jammu and Kashmir, had promised the people abolition of, uh, of the feudal Jagirdari system yes. and uh, land, to the, to land to the tiller and uh, distribution of land to the landless. Yes. This was the promise on which they had spearheaded a movement and people were 
waiting for it to be. So the second was that. So keeping these two, two in mind, I mean, once uh, Jagedari system came into being, it did not does not mean that the, therefore the dispute ends. No, the dispute still remains. But on top of that, at least you have created a society which is far more equitable than it ever was. You have done away with the feudal system which had ruined people for, for decades and people suffered because the Kashmiris uh, right over land was taken away under the, in, under the Dogra uh, rule. In, uh, for for nearly for a uh, hundred years, uh, so getting the land back yeah. was a very important step in their life. Now they are back in a situation where they are threatened, and there is this fear which hangs over them that this present government of India is pushing to divest them of their rights over the land, yeah. and where land comes into picture, it. It, it 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 can become a very it can it can acquire a very uh, how should I say it can become virulent mm -hmm. uh, and which way it'll go be it's very difficult to say. And uh, that's a very important thing that you mentioned in terms of its historical significance. And we will keep following how that development takes place. What repercussions would the Re uh, Reorganization Act will have on the state of Jammu and Kashmir? So on that note, we end this interview. Thank you so much, Gautam, for joining us. And uh, for these stories, these updates and many more, please log on to newsclick.in and uh, keep following Kashmir with us. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.